All right, so recording's up. How are you guys doing? Welcome to Live Traders Forex Room. Anmol here. I am back. I am back. So as you guys know, I uh, was running the Forex Room, uh, you know, 2016, 2017. Uh, and then I took a little break because, you know, I, I do the Stocks Room. I didn't want to do like Stocks Room, Forex Room. I don't want to do all of that because it's a lot of, you know, a lot of time that it takes. And it takes time away from all the other things I'm involved with, which is, as you guys know, I manage some money for friends, family, and uh, I also manage some money for some private investors, mostly in the Forex markets. Uh, and then I do my own trading in the Forex and stocks in conjunction with some of the other businesses I have. Uh, you know, last year I started a couple of new businesses outside the trading industry, so which took a little bit of a time away from me doing the rooms. I still do the stocks room every day, but you know, with all these businesses and then you know, the other uh, investments that I'm involved with kind of took time away from doing both. And also I was traveling a lot back in the day. I'm still am. I still am. I was just in India. So I'm still in India right now. And I'm going over to Vietnam and then Thailand after that before returning to New York next month. So, you know, I thought, okay, 2019, I have some more time because now I have, you know, a CEO and a, you know, a manager, to handle some of the other businesses so now i have more time to focus on you know what i'd like to do most which is trading so i, I am now back uh jeff yates was filling in for my place he was supposed to be filling in for a couple of months but then i was like you know what jeff you're doing a great job why don't you just you know keep doing that uh so jeff's still going to be around uh he's not going to be doing a session here and there because i will be doing a session but on days I'm traveling or I'm in a flight or I'm unable to do the session, then Jeff will still be back in the room and doing the sessions on the days where I would be traveling. Uh, so before I start into the Forex review, I just want to go over some of the changes in the Forex trading room. So some of the changes are obviously, as you know, I will be doing the Forex room now. Uh, and uh, the, some of the other changes are the timings. So that we used to do at night because it was a good balance for the UK people and the U US people. But then what also ended up happening was a lot of the US folks didn't really want to tune in at night, right? They wanted to tune in in the middle of the day. So then I thought, okay, let me try and do the Forex room maybe early in the morning. Like how about eight to nine? But then I also realized for people in the UK, that's completely like a different time. It's like middle of the morning, you know? So that was too early. So I think this was going to be a, good speed, sweet spot. So from now on, the Forex trading room sessions will be on 12.15 to 1.15 p.m. Eastern time, Monday to Friday. Uh, Wednesday, however, we're gonna be slightly early. So Wednesday, the session is going to be 11.15 uh, to 12.15 a.m. Eastern time, all right? Just an hour early on Wednesdays. And then Sunday, we're still gonna have the trade uh, review that Lee does for about a 30-minute market review. So Lee will still be doing those sessions on Sundays. So those are a couple of changes that are going to be taking place. So um, those are some of the changes. Uh, the Twitter account will still be active. So if you guys don't yet know already how to set up text alerts, uh, that's you can definitely do that on Twitter, and I highly recommend you do that. So if you go on your Twitter account, um, you are able to enter your cell phone number on there, and then you can select to receive notifications. So every time we send out a trade, we post a trade, we tweet a trade, or you know anything else, you guys can actually get a text message right to your phone. So you don't even have to have the Twitter on your phone, right? The other easy way is just to download the Twitter application on your iPhone or Android, and you'll still get all those trades. So that's how it's going to go from here, um, Monday to Friday, 12.15 p.m. Eastern to 1.15 p.m. Eastern. We're going to have the Forex session. Uh, Wednesdays will be 11.15 to 12.15, and then Sunday, who have a 30 minute market review that Lee Kowalski would be doing. Uh, the trades uh, will be sent out via Twitter. As I said, you can set up to receive alerts on those. Uh, so just if you guys are not familiar with my trading style in Forex, uh, my trading style in Forex is pretty simple. I do not day trade Forex, right? So I'm not gonna be taking scalps or you know, short term trades, um, which are you know like a scalpy type of trades. Uh, my trades in Forex are swing trades. So I trade based on the four hour chart, the daily chart, the weekly chart, all right? And usually my stop losses are anywhere from 100 pips to uh, 200 pips stop losses, but then also my targets are anywhere from 200 pips to 400 pips targets. So it's a swing trade type of methodology 
that I trade in Forex, which I've done really well with. Um, as you guys know, 2015, I ended up making about 73%. And uh, 2016, I ended up making over 100%. 2017, I ended up about 70%. 2018, I was not a good year for me overall. I was uh, basically, you know, start of the day year down and then reversed it back up to still end for like a small year. Uh, 2019 so far is off to a really good start. And um, so that's kind of my methodology. So I trade on four hour and daily chart. So an example of a trade, I have one trade uh, going on right now, which is the daily chart. You guys can see here, right in front of you, what you guys see is a daily chart of the US dollar, Canadian, uh, Swiss franc, right? So USDCHF, US dollar, Swiss franc. So this is a short trade that I have open, which I also tweeted out, uh, you know, a, a couple of hours ago. So this trade is now triggered. This trade is open and we are in this trade. Um, so as you guys can see here, you guys will be able to see um, the trade that I've set up on the USD Swiss franc. So it's about a two to one trade, right? As you guys can see, our stop loss is about 100 pips and our target is about 200 pips. So the two to one trade going on right over here. So this green box that you see is my profit target. All right. And then the red box that you see is the size of my stop loss. So you might be asking, you know, why take this trade? You know, why short this trade? Well, you know, USD Swiss franc, as you guys can see here, has recently been in a smaller downtrend, right? Every time it touches the trend line, it seems to go lower. So it's in a series of lower highs and lower lows, right? Lower highs and lower lows, lower highs and lower lows, lower highs and lower lows. So every time it touches into this trend line, it seems to, you know, come want to come back lower. And I've been having a good success trading this uh, currency pair where I've been basically selling into here, I've been buying on the way down, and I'm sort of doing the same thing here again, where I sold uh, US Swiss Bank today, my entry was uh, you know, 0.9814, right around here, my stop loss is 99.14, it's about 100 pips stop loss here, right, and then my target is 200 pips stop loss, which is basically back down into these prior lows. So this prior pivot low here is where I'm looking for this thing to go down, uh, for my target, right? Basically where it went the last time. And I'm just looking for this thing to continue a series of lower highs and lower lows and work its way down into the target. Um, so that's kind of what I'm looking to do on the Swiss franc. And our stop loss is above, above you know, 99.14, which is a good stop loss because if we get stopped out, then this trade is no longer valid, right? Because this trade is going lower. So if it wants to really work, it should go lower because if it goes higher now, and stops us out, what it's basically doing is it's also breaking this trend line, which actually causes this to become bullish. So that's a perfect place to, uh, you know, place the stop loss. So that's kind of what I'm looking to do. And as this currency pair, you know, if it goes in our favor, I do trail and lower my stop losses, right? So let's say we go down here, I might lower my stop from here to here. And let's say we get another lower high, I might lower my stop loss again, and I'll keep lowering it until we get to the target or until we trail out of our position. So this is one trade I have going on on the US uh, Swiss franc. Um, apart from that, um, you know, let's take a look at some other currency pairs here. Give me one second here. Let me go ahead and load the other list. So the, the main currency pairs, right, the ones that I trade are, uh, let me see, let me count how many are there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 12, 13, 14, 15. So there's about a 15 currency pairs that I trade. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, type it over here. All right. So you guys can see which currency pairs I mainly trade. It's not that I don't trade any currency pairs outside of those, but these are the ones that I focus on. So the Australian dollar, I focus on Aussie CAD. I focus on, you know, uh, AD JAPI. I focus on AD USD. I, then I trade the Canadian uh, Swiss. I trade the Canadian uh, Japanese yen. I trade the Swiss Japanese yen. Um, and I trade the Euro CAD. I trade the Euro Swiss. I trade the Euro USD. I trade the Pound CAD. I Pound Swiss and Pound USD. And uh, then I trade on the US side. I trade the USD CAD, USD Swiss, and USD Jappy.
So those are the currency pairs that I focus on, right? Those are the 15 uh, currency pairs that I personally focus on and I trade. It's not that I won't trade anything outside of those. I definitely sometimes do trade, uh, take trades outside of these currency pairs, but these are the kind of main ones that I like to trade. And the reason for that is that they um, they seem to be follow they seem to follow trend lines very well, so they make for you know uh, good trades. So those are what I uh, focus on. All right. So let's dive in. Let's dive in by taking a look at some currency pairs and see what else might be setting up. Um, you know, looking at the Aussie CAD right now, as you guys can see, Aussie CAD. By the way, this white line that you see on your chart, my chart, is the 40 period uh, simple moving average. Okay. This chart, or line that you see is a 40 simple moving average. What I find is that in uh, Forex, especially on a daily chart, the 40 simple moving average seems to be a really good barometer for where the currency pair might be headed. And, and you guys can see that here, right? Breaks below the 40 SMA, look what happens. On the way up, that 40 SMA becomes resistance, right? Breaks down below, rallies up, 40 SMA becomes resistance. Breaks down below, rallies up, right? So stays below the 40. So on a, on a currency pair, you, you know, you don't really want to go long a currency pair when they are below the 40 simple, all right? And the same way you don't really want to short a currency pair when they're above the 40 simple unless they're like way extended, right, from the 40 SMA, then okay, yeah, so sometimes you can take a counter trend short. But ideally you want to play in the direction of the trend in the direction of the 40 simple moving average. Uh, and also that's because the 40 simple, the position of the 40 simple on the daily chart is basically where the eight simple will be on the weekly chart. So that's kind of what it is. So the, this, that the location of this eight SMA on the weekly is the location of the 40 SMA on the daily. So uh, looking at the Aussie CAD right now, from a daily perspective, to me, it looks like it wants to go higher, but at the same time, you definitely don't want to go long right now because you, you can see here, there's also a downtrend line going on on the Aussie CAD. Right, so you definitely don't want to go long here, but on the daily bias, it definitely looks like it wants to go higher. So potential trade on Aussie uh, Aussie CAD is actually going long when a trend line breaks. Okay, so that would be my suggestion. It's like as a potential trade, you could look to go long Aussie CAD, uh, let's say above 9600. Right, so when it actually breaks this downtrend line, probably by above like 9600 level. On Aussie CAD with a stop loss, uh, you can probably give it like 100 pips, uh, put around 9,500, right? So 96 by 95, and you could look for a move back to like 9,800, uh, which would be about a 300 pip, 300 pip move with a 100 pip stop loss. So that's three to one. So that's a potential trade that I am looking at and considering on the Aussie dollar, uh, Canadian dollar, all right? So 96 by 95 with a you know move back to uh, 98. Because that would mean a break of this uh, trend line on the daily chart, and then it probably would be ready to uh, push back up higher. So that's something to keep an eye on on Aussie CAD. I'm looking at it right now. Obviously, if I do trade it, I will tweet it out so you guys will be aware of that. Uh, Aussie Japanese yen. Uh, this is one that I would personally want to leave alone for you know for a few months, in fact, or a few weeks. You know, there might be some trades on the four-hour chart setting up, but Right now, you guys can see the Aussie yen had a major breakdown, right? Major breakdown here. It's been trying, it's been holding the support area for like a long time. And then 2019, it started off with like a big drop, but then immediately reversed back up. So this is an area where anything could happen, right? It could touch this area, lower high, and then roll over again, or it could start to stabilize. And, you know, I, I think it's just going to be, a period of choppy action on the, uh, you know, AUD JAPI. So just something, in my opinion, just to just to stay on the sidelines for now, unless you start to see some moves on, you know, the, the higher time frames. All right. So let's take a look at the AU Aussie uh, US dollar. Same thing here. The Aussie pairs have kind of got a little bit whack with that little shakeout that it had in the beginning of 2019, right? But most of these Aussie pairs. Had this little shakeout, dipped below, came right back up. I'm not seeing a whole lot to do with this at this point. The only thing I can think of 
with the Aussie USD is like, let's say we were to get another one of those big red bars, something like this happen. Yeah, that could be an interesting area to look for a short, right? With your stop losses somewhere above this, you know, this base right over here, and then look for a further pullback down in there. So that's something I might be open to. But again, we would need to see some sort of red bar, just like we saw a green bar here that ignited this move higher. We need to see a red bar here that ignites a move lower. So right now, if you keep seeing bars which are narrow range like this, I think it's just best to stay on the sidelines for now. All right. Um, let's see. So Canadian dollar Swiss franc. This is starting to set up for a potential short play, and which I'm really, really looking at. Uh, before I analyze this trade, does anybody want to tell me why you might want to short this? Because, you know, no, I know it's a, an analysis room and it's a trading room, but I also want you guys to kind of, you know, learn and develop technical pattern recognition. I see three potential reasons why I might want to short the uh, CAD CHF. Anybody? I see three potential reasons. Let's take a guess. I'm going to give you guys a couple seconds before I analyze it for you. But I see three potential reasons. All right, I'll just say it. <laughs> so what, reason number one that as we were talking about the 40 SMA, right? Let's see. So Jack says into resistance there, a little cell setup. Top and tail says Gregory. Leonard says daily support. Um, touching the MA. Yeah, so you know, couple both all right reasons. So number one, we rallied back into this moving average, right? Which will potentially act as resistance and also this prior pivot here. This prior pivot. 40 SMA, so that's a couple reasons right there. The other reason, it got a, a little topping tail, right? Topping tail candle right at that resistance level. So that's another potential reason right over there, right? And then this setup, if you uh, if you guys have taken the Forex course or if you guys have taken uh, the Professional Trading Strategies course, the PTS course on the website, so this is actually called a sell setup that we teach, right? It's in the courses right there. It's called a sell setup where in a downtrend, that's what happens, right? You go lower, you go bounce. Touch the MA, you go lower, you bounce. Lower, bounce. And then you back up again here. So potentially another move lower for move back down. So this is known as a sell setup, right? So yeah, Fibonacci 2 probably, sell setup 2 probably, moving average, topping tail, all that good stuff. And then here's another thing, which you might or might not have noticed. Look at this. Now, do you guys see another reason? Yeah? Do you guys see another reason? So how this is our uptrend line. It keeps holding this uptrend line, right? The uptrend line finally broke in December, market tank, and now we're retesting that trend line. So this trend line that was acting as support on Canadian Swiss franc should now act as resistance, and it is. And it is starting to act as resistance. You see how we get a red bar from here? So it's starting to act as resistance. So we got a trend line, we got a sell setup, we got a 40 SMA. Um, all those reasons come together to make me want to short it. So I will probably short it. I'm not sure yet. I'm just waiting for I'm waiting for it to get below the 40 SMA on the four hour chart. So see how in the four hour chart, so the daily is good for a short, no doubt. But in the four hour chart, you still sort of have kind of like an uptrend line going, right? You know, also, it's right at the 40 SMA right now. It's right at the 40 SMA. So I don't want to jump in here only to see this hold and then bounce back up higher again. So what I'm really waiting on to enter this on the short side is to it to get like a bigger red bar to really get below the 40 SMA. And then I'm probably going to look to short it here, put my stop loss somewhere above here, and then look for a move back down there. So this is probably going to be a trade on my end. But this is what I'm telling you guys. This is what I'm waiting for, for it to get above, it get below 40 SMA. That's kind of what I'm waiting on. But if I set this trade up, just so you guys can get an idea, it's a good trade. So let's let's try and sh uh, set this trade up. So let's say it gets below here. All right. And I give it a stop loss. Um, let's say we put our stop loss right over here to give it a little bit of room. And we aim for a target back down here. 
So let's see now. So yeah, so this is about a 1.72, right? So I want it to be at least 2 to 1, okay? I do take trades less than 2 to 1, but I like them to be 2 to 1, yeah? I like them to have 2 to 1 in them. So either we get a bigger target or either we, you know, tighten up the stop loss a little bit. Yeah, so right here, if we use this as a stop loss, now it becomes a 2 to 1 trade, yeah? So that's not bad. So this is something I am looking at. And again, if I do trade it, when I take a position on it, uh, I will post it in the Twitter account, so you will see that. But uh, that's kind of what I'm waiting for, is for it to get a little bit lower, get below the 40 SMA, and then we could use a stop loss right above these pivots and look for a further move down. So keep an eye on it. Uh, you know, Canadian Swiss franc, I do like that short. All right. Let's go through the next one. Canadian Japanese yen. Canadian Japanese yen. Canadian Japanese yen. Same thing as the uh, same thing as the Aussie yen, right? Same thing. They all broke down in 2019, rolled off hard, rallied back up, and again, it's it's a tough one, but this also looks lower because see how it dropped, rallied 50%, so Fibonacci 50% retracement right into the last pivot, and you're starting to roll over here. So, you know, this thing could definitely drop lower, but it's not as high probability as the other trade, right? Like, this one looks lower, too. Straight based on Fibonacci, lower high. Uh, and also, you can see here, this last pivot here. That's exactly where this line is. So if I was to draw a line like that, you just look at my crosser, basically, right? <laughs> look at my crosser. It's basically right at that resistance level. So, you know, does it look lower? Sure. Support turning into resistance. It could definitely go lower. But it's not as high probability as the other one because this one only has a couple things in its favor whereas the canadian swiss had a few things going for it so this one i'm gonna leave it alone for now but again if you get a red bar which is a little bit bigger shows some conviction i will be looking to uh you know get into this one as well but not at the moment swiss franc japanese yen i don't like it at all right now so probably best we leave it alone uh, maybe on a green bar above the 40 SMA, look for a long, but nothing right now. Nothing at the moment on this one. Uh, Euro Canadian dollar. Mm, let's take a look. Um, Euro Canadian. You know what? Again, reverse of the uh, Canadian Swiss. This actually looks like a potential long setting up. So I'll, let me see, one, two, I see about three reasons for a long. Anybody want to take a guess? This is actually the opposite of the other one. <laughs> it's actually the opposite of the other one, but, uh, you know, let me, let me do this. Let me squinch this chart up a little bit. So see how we have a uh, uptrend line, right, on the uh, EuroCAD. So we have an uptrend line on the EuroCAD. It's been making a series of, you know, higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, and then now back down to that trend line. So potentially a higher low for another higher high. Yeah. So EuroCAD does look pretty interesting at this point. And then also uh, to add to that factor, because again, one word that you will notice I mention a lot is especially in Forex, is confluence. So confluence means means more things come together, make a better trade, right? So if you got trend lines, you got support resistance, you got moving averages, right? You got patterns, like the more things you have, the better the trade is. So that's what I try and look for in most trades. Uh, unlike stocks, stocks you're like, okay, it's into resistance, you know, you, you try and take a shot at it. So they're a little bit different that way. Forex is more, you know, structure. So in this case, we got the trend line on the EuroCAD. We have the moving average too, the 40 SMA, right? We have a series of higher highs and higher lows. And then uh, we also have another thing, which I don't know if you guys might've noticed or not, but if I'm to do it here, bada bing, bada boom, look at that. Now, look at this. So now you see how um, this trend line was resistance, all right? This trend line was resistance 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 we broke that trend line look what happened we broke that trend line big push up 
and now we're pulling back into that same trend line which was resistance might act as support combine it with this uptrend line right and the moving average so this is definitely a long candidate right definitely a long candidate and also buy setup so buy setup entry as for pts core so all those things coming together i think the euro cad uh you know should continue higher but does not mean i'm going to buy it right here because again same thing as i said on the uh, canadian swiss we're going to look for it to get above the 40 sma on the four hour chart right now it's still below the 40 sma so i don't want to go long just yet but if i get a green bar here right that breaks the 40 sma gets above it right breaks the 40 sma gets above it yeah now we could get in long above here place our stop loss down here so that's a hundred you know 150 pip stop loss and look for 200 300 pip target so that's kind of something i'm going to be looking for so again if i set this trade up and again, the good part about trading view, the charts that I use is like, I can set these trades up and then we can always come back and the, these will still be, you know, available here. All right, so our risk is, let's say I enter over here. I put my stop loss under here and I want to get, let's see. Oh, this is a short trade, my bad. That's why I was wondering why is it going the other way? It's a long trade, my bad long all right so long stop loss we put it right under here and we're going to look for two to one so right here that becomes two to one so now that's a potentially a good trade yeah what do you guys think what do you guys think you're okay i quite like it if it gets above like 1.53 right if it gets above 1.53 stop loss around 1.51 Target on 1.57. That's a two to one trade. So, you know, I like that. But we'll wait to get in. All right, we'll wait to get in. Those are a couple things to watch. All right. But this is similar to the the CAD trade we were looking at, just in the opposite direction now. All right. So now before I start, you know, reviewing. And looking at some of the other currency pairs, I want to kind of get an idea for, you know, your guys' trading. Because I know I've been absent from the Forex room a while, and uh, there's some new names in the room, and there's some, you know, old names that are not, they're going to be coming back. So, because when I was doing the Forex room, there was like a lot of members. Um, there were like, you know, 30, 40 members in the room. Uh, but obviously, since I couldn't be given time to it, you know. Stuff happened, but uh, the, a lot of members are going to be coming back in the room, so the room's going to get a little busy. So I want to kind of get an idea of, um, you know, what your style of trading is like. So type in a one if you are currently trading forex for more than one year. Type in a two if you're totally new, you know, totally new, maybe less than six months, or type in a three if you've been doing it for more than two years. So Sabash completely new, okay. Leonardo's been doing it for more than a year. Jack is relatively new, less than six months. Okay. All right. And uh, Gregory, what about you? So Gregory, how long uh, how long have you been uh, trading Forex? So I want to try and get an idea of where we go from here. Because if you're all, because uh, when I was running the Forex room, uh, we had a lot of experienced traders. So, you know, a lot of people who've been trading like more than me even, right? I had a lot of people in the room before. So fx since about 2015 okay so you've been in the game for a while four years now right um so what's because i want you i want to make the room like you guys want it you know what i mean like i don't want to just come in and do the same thing every day so i want to see what best i can do for the room so if you guys obviously have any suggestions right you're like hey i'm all you know i think we should do the forex room this way or you know this would be nice to see in the room or that would be nice to see uh, definitely let me know you know here's my email so i'm going to throw in my email here so we're going to rebuild this place up so let me know uh, how you know what would you like do you like the twitter text alerts for the trades or do you want it only to be done in the room or maybe you're like hey let's move it to some other type of chat room right uh, order partially filled and we can go over order it filled. that way ignore that sound order canceled <laughs> that's my uh, stocks platform all right so so that's kind of how we're gonna, you know, look to rebuild it and see what goes on. Okay. 
Um, so let me know any feedback or suggestions or stuff like you have. And now a couple of the things I have planned is uh, we might have some more traders coming in the room, meaning uh, not members, but like actual moderators. So I'll be running the Forex room every day, but I'm also going to have some other, I'm going to try and get some other people. So maybe we have like two sessions a day, right? Like I'm doing a 12 o'clock session, afternoon session. Maybe I have another trader doing the evening session. So that's my eventual goal down the road as we grow the room, as we build as a community. That will be the eventual goal is to have like an afternoon session, an evening session. Because if it's open 24 hours, you know, then more opportunity, the better. Uh, my trades will always be swing trades, just like I'm reviewing with you guys, daily charts, four hour charts. But I'm going to try and find, uh, you know, somebody who's had success with our Forex courses, is doing well, and then maybe who trades on a shorter time frame. So, you know, maybe one session is like a day trading session and one trading like a swing session. So that's something we're going to look to do down the road. All right, uh, looking at the uh, Euro Swiss franc, Euro Swiss franc is just a, it's a dead currency pair right now. Uh, to me, it looks like it wants to go lower, but it's also not high probability short because to me, it looks like if it breaks this level, it wants to go lower. But then also, I, I realize that if I look to the left, see how this area, there was quite a lot of uh, resistance back in 2015. And now that resistance level could end up becoming support as well. So I don't see a really high probability trade going on at the moment on it. Euro US dollar, Euro USD, um, it's starting to look like it wants to go higher, but at the same time, it's into some level of resistance here. Right over there. So you see how you know Euro USD had support in this level right around here by a little peak below that level reclaimed it and then that level acted as support yet again right yet again and then finally broke it again and then acted as resistance right and then ran up into that in 2019 and acted as resistance yet again so that trend line is basically holding euro right now but i think the euro might be ready for a potential move higher long term if it can get above about one point, you know, one point one five six, so right about, right about these prior highs. If it can get above those, you might start perhaps a uh, trend higher on the EU, but uh, not at the moment though, not at the moment. Uh, as long as it's above this, below this line, it's uh, it's going to be a tough trade. Um, but if you're trading on a shorter time frame, and you know, probably above these recent you know, pivot here, you might get a bounce. So as a short-term trader, that's something you would look for. So as a short-term trader, you dive into like the 15-minute chart and you see like this little uh, base going on here. So above that base is where something, you know, you could probably look to scalp it for a move higher. But I, I never like to scalp these bases because you never know, man. It could be, it could just be a base that instead of going higher, triggers you in on the trade and then right back down and that's not a good feeling so i'm more in the boat of letting them kind of do their thing and then when the trade becomes clear and obvious you know then we can look to trade those so that's kind of where uh that's kind of where i'm at on that all right pound canadian gbp cad on the daily chart um it actually looks like it wants to go higher, but I'm not a high probability trade just yet. Let's take a look at the four hour chart. This is interesting, you know, because one of the things that's, again, for those of you who trade stocks, one of the things that's different in stocks versus Forex is that, let's say on a stock, you get this kind of a green move, right? You're more likely to kind of pull back and then go higher. Currency pairs, what tends to happen is when you get these big moves, they actually ignite moves, right? So see how you got a big red move here? Rather than pulling back, you dropped another, you know, freaking few pips right into support. So now that we got this green little bar here, this could actually be signaling perhaps a move back up higher. So pound CAD, um, just to watch at this moment. Yeah, but just to watch at the moment, but a very interesting uh, position nonetheless. But I'm not going to post a trade on that just yet. Pound Swiss, yeah, I mean, not seen a whole lot here. 
So the four hour chart. Yeah, I'm not seeing a whole lot here. You know, try to get above that base. You know, try to get above that resistance level. Got above it, pulled back. That resistance acted as a support, trying to move back up higher. But then again, look to the left. We got a little resistance right over here where it turned into a topping tail. So this one we're going to leave alone for now. Pound dollar, GU. Uh, GU is looking like a long. You know, GU is looking like a long pound dollar. And uh, the reason for that is uh, right over here. See how staying below the 40 SMA, tried to get above it, rolled over. Now trying to get back above the 40 uh, SMA. And the slope of the 40 SMA is still down, but it's stabilizing a little bit. Um, so let's draw a trend line because that's that's in the end that will determine the trade. So you see how the pound dollar, the GU, is sort of into this trend line where it failed the prior three times. right? So a long entry on this one would actually be a break of this trend line. Right? Break of this trend line long, stop loss, let's say you put it down in here, and then you could actually look for a couple hundred pip move on the upside on the GU. So something to, again, something to keep an eye on, no immediate trade to be taken here, but uh, GU definitely uh, a, a watch, right? If it gets above this trend line. If I go to the four hour chart, you'll see it a little more clearly about this trend line. And you'll see how this recent little move up you got was right into the trend line from where it's starting to pull back a little bit. So again, a break of the trend line is what we need to watch on the GU for for a trade entry. All right. So just to watch at the moment and uh, we'll see what goes on. All right, let's see. Uh, got a couple more currency pairs to review before we end the session today. The pound Canadian dollar. Pound Canadian, I mean, it just got whacked in 2019, right? Look at that pound Canadian. Sorry, a US CAD. Uh, just literally broke the 40 SMA and just tanked straight down. But it's starting to get interesting to me for a bounce. Um, yeah, definitely starting to get interesting for a bounce here on the pound CAD. Well, one, two, three, four, five, six red bars in a row. Uh, starting to get these bottoming tails here, as you guys can see. Six red bars down in a row. Starting to get a little support zone here. Bottoming tail. Starting to move back up. And also, if I draw like a trend line to see where it's starting to bounce, you will see that, you know, this area was resistance here. I became a little bit support. and Maybe it's trying to become support again. So I would look for some conviction on this. Conviction meaning, like again, as I all the other trades, a four hour, four hour green candle is what I want, right? So like a nice green candle on the four hour gets about the 40 SMA. So if it can get about 40 SMA, nice green candle, that could be another long trade. Long above here, stop down here, and then look for a bounce back up. So um, let me go ahead and I'll mark this trade out because if it gets above 40 SMA, it's definitely interesting. So if it gets above 40 SMA, let's say we use our stop loss down in here. And we're trying to get two to one, which is back to the high. Yeah, actually less than the high. So if it, if it goes back up almost to the highs, that's a two to one potential. So we'll keep an eye on it and see what it does on the uh, US CAD. Uh, US Swiss franc, this one, as you guys already know, I'm already short this trade. I tweeted this out a couple hours ago, so I'm already short this trade. Uh, again, just uh, the reasoning, just to repeat that, was it's in a downtrend. Every time it touches, gets close to the trend line, gets rejected. So I'm, you know, kind of making the bet that maybe this is another little lower high, and that's kind of what I'm making a bet on. So I'm already short this at 98.14 with a stop at 99.14, so 100 pip stop. I'm looking for 95.54, which we got a 200 pip target. So I'm already in this trade. It's in the money a little bit, not much. It's slightly in my favor. But as you guys will notice, again, the entry is kind of below the 40 SMA, so which is a good sign. Now that it's getting below 40 SMA, it's a good sign. So, you know, still see. It's, it's, it's only up, like, not much right now, 14 pips. 
So we'll see what happens with this trade. All right. Last but not the least. Actually, it is the least because it's kind of a boring currency pair right now. Uh, the USD Jappy. The UJ, same thing as all the other Japanese pairs. You know, big little sell-off in the beginning of 2019. But look at how, this is beautiful, right? Look at where this stopped. Look at this tailed low. Right into the prior low, right? So technical analysis works. But right now, I just don't see any trade on it. To be honest, I don't see any trade to be taken on it. Same thing, if you do want to trade it, wait for some sort of igniting bar, right? Whether a green igniting bar, then you can probably go long with, right? Or you look for a red igniting bar to the downside where you can go short with. But in the meantime, I don't see a whole lot to do with these currency pairs, right? So we just got to wait for some sort of igniting bars. When you get these tiny, tiny bars, it's like it's a guess where it's going to go. It's a guess. So right now it's below the 40 SMA. So bearish until, you know, bearish until it gets above the 40 SMA. But I won't take a bearish trade just yet until we see some sort of igniting bar either way. So that's my bias on these. So just to sum up, guys, um, no real trades at the moment. Uh, I'm in the US uh, Swiss, as you guys know. And the other trades that I like that I mentioned are the ones that I drew over here, which is USD CAD if it gets above the 40 SMA on the four hour that's one trade you could potentially look at the other one uh, was um, the pound USD if it gets above this trend line that's an interesting one but I'm not setting up that trade just yet because I'm not sure the levels of those a pound CAD's interesting too but no real setups on that the best ones are these Euro CAD right Euro CAD and then the CAD Swiss those are the best ones in my opinion. Euro CAD long, CAD Swiss short. Those in my opinion are the best ones. Followed by uh, US CAD long and then pound uh, pound CAD and pound USD long, which are potentially setting up, but they haven't set up yet. Whereas the the Canadian Swiss and the Euro CAD have already set up. All right. So that's kind of what I'm looking at. Uh, if there's anything you guys want me to take a look at, let me know. If there's any currency pair that you guys are watching, you guys are looking at, or anything you want me to take a look at or review, uh, let me know. I'd be happy to take a look at it. Um, but but that's kind of the you know the trades for today. Uh, Aussie yen. Let's take a look at AUD. Uh, I did look at this a couple of minutes ago. Maybe you missed uh, maybe you missed it. But I yeah I reviewed that a few minutes ago, and I was talking about how the yen pairs are kind of you know how the yen pairs are you know how the, how the yen pairs are kind of in a position where this little sell-off in 2019 kind of destroyed the technical chart for a little bit. So I think on all pairs that are Japanese yen related pairs, right? I think on all Japanese yen related pairs, I think we just wait for now, you know, until we see some sort of ignition. So pound, you know, the Aussie Japanese yen, I was talking about how this area was resistance, right? Oh, sorry, support broke it, became resistance, broke it right back up into that. So potentially you would think this is going to be one that goes lower, right? And that's the right thing to think, but at the same time, I don't see a trade on it yet. So what I was talking about was on all these yen related pairs, you don't really want to trade in when you start to get these little, little bars because that shows indecision and you just don't know what you want to do because they're above the 40 SMA on the four hour, but they're below the 40 SMA on the daily. So it's like it's a very neutral bias. So on all yen related pairs, what we need to wait on is some sort of ignition bar. So it's maybe like a big green bar here. And then, okay, we're like, all right, now we can go long with a stop here and look for a move higher. Or we wait for a big red bar down here, right? And then we short with a stop up here. And then we look for a further move down. So until we get some sort of igniting bar, right, either on the upside or the downside. I think this these currency yen related currency pairs are basically going to be you know kind of doing this, and this is going to be a choppy trading. So uh, I think until we get some sort of ignition bar, uh, it's best to stay on the sidelines on these for now. All right, so that's my uh, kind of thinking on these yen related pairs right now. All right, so. Uh, any, anything else? 
anybody wants to go over anything else, let me know. But, um, you know, this is kind of how the room's going to be um, because I want to get you guys into a habit of not really finding trades, not really, you know, taking trades. Because uh, I think that's one of the reasons why people don't make any money in the markets is because a lot of people focus on taking trades. They might come in and be like, oh, I'm all, you know, I've been in the room, you know, three days. I haven't taken a trade. You know, I'm like, hey, you want to take a trade? You want to make money, you know? So structure is what in my in my forex trading, the way I trade forex is very different to how I trade stocks. Stocks is more about like finding opportunity in trades because there's so many of them. In currency pairs, I think what's really important is to have the right structure and really set up your trade. Just like I I was reviewing with you, this is what your homework should be. So if you guys want to get better, this is sort of what your homework needs to be, where you structure your trades like I was showing you, right? So for example, I gave you like this one, or even the, the CAD CHF, see how I was given away structure, right? So we have the cell setup pattern. We have the moving average. We have the little topping tail, right? We have the resistance. We have the support trend line becoming resistance. So like we're creating the structure and then we're setting up our trades like this. And when you set up your trades, you let it go. You don't try and micromanage it on the 15 minute chart, right? If you want to manage it, like let it go a little bit, all right, then you can go break even. Maybe it does something like this, goes lower again, right? Then you can lower your stop and like really trade structurally. If you trade structure wise, you're going to do well in Forex, right? If you try and do like, hey, I want to trade NFP, I want to trade non farm payrolls, I want to trade FOMC, you know, you're looking for action, that's the wrong thing to do. If you're looking for action, it's the wrong thing to do, man. It's not the market you want to look for action in. You want to really set your trades create the right structure and then do it properly, you know? And I, I fell victim to this too, because I had an amazing year, because I, I manage money too. So I manage money for a lot of other people, friends, family, you know, private, not public hedge fund or anything like that, but you know, close friends, family. I have a good pool of money that I manage for people. And that's kind of a victim that I fell into. In 2016, I had a really awesome year. I mean, I had like triple digit years, you know? And it's, I'm not even joking, I'll show you later on my FX book. Right on my FX book, I'll pull it up one day and I'll show you. I was having a triple digit year. I mean, really crushing it. And then 2017, what happened? People saw my triple digit returns. I get a lot of investors coming in. And I started the year off with a bang. Like, I literally hit 60, 70% on the account for everybody in the first few months of 2017. And then what happened? I got a little bit overconfident in 2017 towards the end. I got a little bit overconfident. I'm like, you know what? I'm at 80% for the year. I want to make it was like two months to go, and I was like, I want to hit another triple digit year. That's going to be amazing. I want to try and make 20%. I was doing like all sort of news trading, and I really got away from my what made me successful. Right? I got away from what made me successful, and I tried to do things that I shouldn't have tried to do. And what ends up happening? Instead of making 20% more and hitting triple digit returns, I gave back a lot of my returns because I was going against what makes successful traders. And I deserved it. I got a pretty bad couple months. And then that's that. And then 2018, I went back into my roots of discipline. And so far, it's been good. So this is how, kind of how, if I go to the whiteboard here, right? So I want to show you. I don't know what this is. Who drew this? <laughs> it looks like something else. <laughs> this must be Jeff. <laughs> anyway, so, you know, this is kind of how my equity curve uh, was looking like. You know, 2016, right, 17, like just like this, straight up. And then I was like, ah, oh, this will keep going. And then I had like, bam, like a really bad pullback on my equity curve. And then I, I was like, 2018, I went back to my roots. And slowly, slowly, my equity curve is back to the curve. Okay, and this is where I was like, oh, I want to trade news. I want to trade FOMC. I want to trade 15-minute chart, 30-minute chart, scalping. I started doing all this stupid stuff. And that's what created a pullback. And then now it's back into an uptrend because I, the, in Forex, you got to understand, you got to trade structure. It's really important. I can't, you know, I can't re you know, reaffirm that enough. Structure, structure, structure. Set your trades up this way and you'll never have, you'll never have a losing, you know, you'll never have a losing month if you structured properly. All right. And uh, another thing I recommend you guys do is uh, go to myfxbook.com if you haven't already done so and set up an account. 
I want everybody to have some sort of trading log, right? Where you can track your trades, you can track your sharp rates, your win loss rates, your equity curve. And my FX book is totally free. So I recommend everybody do that. Ignore my FX book. There's a lot of bullshit on there too. Ignore all of that. Just focus on your reports. Uh, was 2018 different for forex markets? Yes. Uh, now for me, it's been, it's been an up year in 2018, but it, it started off down. You know, 2017, towards the end of 2017 and 18, I was down. But now, you know, I'm back up for the year. But uh, it started off pretty badly. And I think what ended up happening was uh, when cryptocurrencies, basically when Bitcoin started to boom, that's when I had my worst time. Because what ended up happening was, as you guys see here, look at Bitcoin, right? By the way, I think I'm, I should be on TV. I made the world's best call on Bitcoin. Like if you haven't read this, guys, read this article I posted on Bitcoin. All right. And I posted this article on the very day Bitcoin made its high. It's never gone higher since then. All right. I posted the article on Bitcoin when Bitcoin was at 19,000, something like that. And literally that high is where I posted that article. And I talked about how Bitcoin's a bubble, it's going to crash, and basically it's just died from there. Uh, so when this run in Bitcoin happened in 2018 and 17, let me show you here if I zoom in a little bit. Yeah, right here. When the Bitcoin boom started, that's basically where my Forex trading was struggling. Like right over here, this one. And I noticed, and I was talking to a lot of other hedge fund managers, I was talking to a lot of other professional money managers, that also trade Forex and manage money for other people. And I was asking them too, I'm like, hey, how, how's your trading going? They were like, man, I'm struggling a little bit too. So everybody I spoke to was struggling when Bitcoin was booming, which is weird. And I think that's because what was happening, the money was coming out of the Forex markets and it was going into the cryptocurrency market. And then every time crypto was pulling back, the money came back into the Forex markets and came out of the crypto. So like here, came out of the market, came into Forex. Bitcoin started the boom, money came out of the Forex, went into cryptos, right? Money, crypto pulled back, money came back in Forex. So what that created was Forex wasn't really trending in either direction at that time. It was kind of doing this. So you were going long, markets came down. You, you went long the euro, right? And the euro started to come in now. You, you went short the euro then, and the euro started bouncing. So when that period of sideways action caused a lot of issues, because again, we're trend traders, right? We're looking to trade higher highs and higher lows or shorting lower highs and lower lows. But when we're getting sideways action like this, because the money was coming in and out of the Forex markets going into cryptos, and this was a tough period. And now you can see, now that the Bitcoin is kind of trending down, my Forex trading has got basically back to a swing, uptrending swing. And I was talking about the two people. You know, that being said, if you if you guys want to trade cryptos, I mean, I, I will still analyze cryptos here too. So don't, if you have, if you guys trade cryptos, I'd be happy to analyze these too. I sometimes trade cryptos. I don't trade them actively, but I had a, you know, I had a few trades along the while. Well, I think my first trade on crypto I took was when I shorted crypto at, uh, you know, 10,000 and I stopped out of it. I lost, I got out when it hit 11,000. So it was a small loss. And then I shorted at like 18 to 19,000. I got out at basically about a uh, 10,000 is where I got out. So that was a nice winning trade. And I went, went long here, got out of the long. So I mean, I did take a bunch of trades around here, but nothing to write home about because they're very small, small positions. Um, where do I think crypto goes now? Well, Bitcoin, I think pattern's clear, right? Right now, you have this little downtrend line and you're trying to form this uptrend line here. So you're entering a period of a wedge pattern. So don't touch cryptos, right? As long as it's in this pattern. When this breaks this pattern either way, so if it breaks to the upside, definitely long crypto back to back to 6,500. If it breaks to the downside, probably goes to 2,000 bucks. So that's, that's the bias, you know? But right now it's starting to look like maybe it wants to do an inverse head and shoulders. So if it can come back up, then probably goes higher. But we'll see. How many pips should trade? Uh, I'm not sure. What's the question? I'm not sure what the, what you mean by the question, Subash. Let me know. What do you mean by how many pips should trade? How much wood can a woodchuck chuck? Chuck? 
<clears throat> Jeff talked about the trade copier service. Um, yeah, so you know, trade copier service. I uh, I do have a trade copier service. So there's two ways that can work. All right. Um, so basically, the trades that I'm tweeting out in the Twitter account, right, are the same trades I am taking in the trade copier. So it's 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 totally up to you. Right? You can follow the trades in the Twitter account yourself, or you can join the trade copier. The trades are going to be the same, so it's totally up to you on uh, which way you want to do it. Trades are the same. The only difference in trade copier, it automatically gets sent in your account. And, uh, you know, so that's the difference. If you join the trade copier, then basically you don't need to do anything else. Whatever I do in my own account gets automatically copied in your account. You know, that's one way. Or if you don't want to do that, you want to do it yourself, then I basically tweet the trades out and you can just take it yourself. So it's the same thing. Uh, but it's different because if you want to follow yourself, then that's great. You do it yourself. Because in the trade copier, there's no charge for the copier, but the charge is basically 25% of the profit. So that's kind of how it works. So that's kind of like a money management model. So I have over 100 people connected to my trade copier, and I charge like 25% performance fee. So if I make you profit, I charge 25% of that. If there's a loss, then I don't charge you anything. And, you know, that's kind of how it works. But I, I want you guys to, I mean, you can definitely do both, but I, I would like for you guys first to, before you join the copier is just to let's trade together for like a month or two so you guys can see my trading style right so when you get comfortable with my trading style you see some of the trades and then you could decide right because i don't want anybody to jump in just because you know hey i want to you know i want to get the same results as unmo let me jump in i want you guys to feel comfortable before you do anything like that so you know let's trade together for a month or so and if you can feel comfortable and then we can talk about that All right, so on that note, uh, I'm going to close out the session today. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, what did you guys think? Do you think uh, this is useful to you? Do you think this is helpful? Let me know. Great. So, you know, here's my email address. If you guys have any uh, suggestions, comments, uh, feedback, you know, anything you want to talk about I'll be happy to uh, you know review that for you and uh, we could definitely do it together else uh, we'll be back at it tomorrow all right so tomorrow we'll be back at it same time 12 15 to 1 15 p.m. Eastern time so same time tomorrow I will see you in there and I will also post the recordings from the session into the Twitter account so if you're gonna go back and look at it again you want to review it again you could happily do that and uh, you know we'll go ahead and do that so if you're not on the Twitter account definitely do that all right so yeah it's you know that's the goal Gregory is for me to you know trade based on what you're learning in the course so you guys can see that you know what you're learning in the course is not just something you're learning it's actually what I do and that's the whole idea so because I want everybody to you know to kind of become the independently profitable traders and then you know Maybe you guys become the traders that do an afternoon session because that's my goal. I want to create a few more because I have a lot of other people that I mean, basically I had like 10 students that like did really well with the program. Now they're managing their own money management. They have their own copiers. They have their own services and all that. They're doing extremely really well. Uh, but I, my goal right now is that, you know, we as a team grow together. I get some of you guys to start trading real money and start being profitable. And then we can grow this community together where let's I do the morning session and, you know, Gregory does the afternoon session and, you know, Jack does the evening session, you know, and Subash does something else. We kind of grow this thing together and uh, I'm always open to suggestions and feedback. So definitely drop me an email for that. So take care, everybody, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Same time. Have a good one.